I've had this system sat under my TV for something like four or five years now. Initially I had it running as just a NAS. Uh, that includes, or I also included a GPU. One, because the Ryzen CPU I'm using didn't have an iGPU. And two, because I had the idea that I could pass the graphics card into a virtual machine inside FreeNAS and everything would be great. I could have a, a living room gaming system or at least a living room sort of HTPC system. Yeah, that idea fell flat on its face pretty quickly, so I switched over to using ESXi, a level 1 hypervisor, so that I could make better use of the hardware in sight. Now, a few things went wrong with this system, uh, as I'll talk about more in a second, and so it's kind of not in use anymore. Uh, and so I have some plans for it, so let's get into them. But first, a message from this video sponsor, Pulseway. The remote management tool lets you control, update, and manage your systems from anywhere. Who wouldn't want to remotely control when Windows updates actually run? You can also use the remote desktop feature, or you can even use voice commands on your iOS device using their app. If you're more of a, a business customer, their auto remediation, alert notifications, and automations will be a, a great option for you. You can check them out at the link in the description below and save 20% when you sign up via that link. Inside here is a Ryzen, I think, 1400 quad core with uh, 16 gigs of RAM, an M80X motherboard in an ICX chassis, good choice I know, uh, and uh, an RX 460 alongside two 4 terabyte Seagate Animal hard drives and I suppose currently two SATA SSDs. Why two? Well, you can check out this video in the, uh, the cards above for uh, some more details, but long story short, the SATA boot drive started having smart failures. Not very um, smart of it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I had to. Anyway, uh, basically uh, the drives that were in here, the two hard drives are pretty much fine. I just have already recovered all of the data off of them uh, and stored that on one of my other NASes, so I'm not too worried. And I've already recovered the Ubuntu virtual machine that I was running as well, and that's also running on one of my other NASes. So this machine is now kind of no longer useful. It's just taking up space in my living room, plugged in but not really doing anything, and I don't really like having entire fully built systems just sitting around doing nothing. I prefer them to be useful to me. So I wanna make it into something a little bit more useful, specifically a living room gaming or sort of living room HTPC that maybe can play some games as well. You might have also noticed the collection of parts that are sat around me. And that's because what's in here Technically, I could just, you know, install Windows or whatever and run just that, and this would actually be a okay HTPC. I mean, an RX 460 driving just a 4K TV, not playing games, just physically driving the pixels is fine. And again, for, you know, content uh, consumption, a Ryzen 1400 is still plenty fine. But if I want to actually play some games, and I'm not talking, you know, the next AAA titles or playing you know, Cyberpunk on it, I'm talking about playing games like Overcooked and, you know, family games that you might want to play on a TV. Uh, and so for that, I have a few a collection of parts that may or may not fit in here. So it's going to be a bit of an adventure that you can come along with me and, uh, well, get the thing built. I have a Ryzen 3600 a B350 motherboard that I can actually fit in this case and it's one of the only boards that I have that actually supports Wi-Fi and will fit in here. So that's great. I believe I've updated the BIOS so that, that might also be a bit of a trick by the time we get it installed. Uh, I have 16 gigs of 3600 MHz RAM, a one terabit M.2 drive, a Be Quiet. Uh, honestly, I'm not quite sure which cooler it is. You can probably let me know in the comments if you recognize it. A Silverstone SFXL power supply, which technically doesn't fit in here, but there is already a 450 watt power supply in here. And this is a fanless unit that I have been meaning to use for literally like four or five years now. So I'm gonna finally use it. And also, kind of the purpose of this build, uh, the, the parts that I've picked are, I'm going for a, a relatively quiet operation. So hence the large Be Quiet cooler instead of the standard AMD Wraith cooler and the fanless power supply should be nice. Uh, as for a graphics card, I have an RX 5600 XT, which I'm actually very concerned won't fit in this relatively small or relatively short case. 
so I guess we'll see. But first things first, I need to get all of the old parts out of this and I'm going to let you in on a little secret. While I have done my best to, you know, hoover on the outside of this as I'm hoovering around the house and, you know, even taking the front cover off and kind of cleaning it up in there, um, it's nasty in there. Uh, in fact, this is just how nasty it is. Uh, there is a thick, and a, a, like thick with three C's and not in the nice way, type of, you know, layer of dust, of wet dust on the, the back. Uh, the rear fan uh, it is not very nice so I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just take enough of the parts off to be able to hoover all of this and then I'll you know actually take all the parts out okay with all of the absolute filth now actively cleaned uh, let me take all of the parts out of this So the thing is, this case is meant to fit an ATX power supply. I don't know why they bothered, like why they made this an ATX power supply, but it is meant to take one. But I seem to remember that, especially because the motherboard I wanted to use was MATX, which does technically fit in the case, I needed to use an SFX power supply, which doesn't fit. <laughs> um, I didn't have any brackets either, so uh, it seems like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what this is. Um, I just balanced the power supply roughly where it needs to be on the 24 pin. <laughs> ah, clever, clever. So I think the first thing I want to do is check uh, so the power supply is still an SFX L power supply. Uh, the, the problem I have, actually a better thing to check will be the graphics card because that will determine if I need to go and hunt for another graphics card or not. So let's start with that. I know the motherboard isn't in, that's fine. I know where it's going, but yeah, that's... That's, that's not fitting, is it? Yeah, that's like three millimeters too long. Just too long at the back. Ah, uh, okay, that's annoying. Okay, so slight change of plans, as you might be able to tell. Uh, I'm gonna use this. This is a relatively, or actually pretty old Fractal Design case. I think it's like a Fractal Design Core 1500 or something like that. Um, this has been uh, kind of a system that has been built for probably equally, maybe even like seven or eight years at this point. Uh, in there is a, uh, an incredibly old uh, Athlon, an AMD uh, chip, which I think I actually still have the original box. It's a bit buried, uh, but it's one of the super early uh, Athlon chips and it's an AM1 socket. That's uh, how strange this is. Uh, it also uh, actually has AMD Radeon Performance Series memory. That's uh, also how old this is. I'm very sure that's DDR3, definitely. Uh, it also has an OCZ power supply, uh, a Core Extreme. Uh, if anyone remembers OCZ, many don't, but there you go. And also the only uh, storage device that's in this is a uh, very much second-hand uh, 500 gig Seagate pipeline hard drive. Uh, this is actually one of the first drives that I purchased. Uh, I purchased two used drives, a Seagate pipeline, and I think it was the WD Blue. Uh, and uh, I ran them in RAID 0 as my boot drive because uh, back when I first built my PC, I couldn't afford an SSD because they were stupidly expensive. Um, so uh, I thought that RAIDing to use, or RAID 0 uh, to used 500 gig hard drives was the best, next best thing, right? Yeah, no, it failed within like two weeks. <laughs> Don't raid your hard drives, kids, or don't raid zero your hard drives, especially as your boot drive, jeez. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's tear this one down. 
and then I think I'm going to stick with all of the same parts. Uh, I'm going to stick with the SFX style power supply, even though it technically doesn't fit in here, uh, just because of the fact that it's it's fanless and it's an uh, 80 plus platinum rated power supply, uh, so it's going to be very efficient. I'm not running it at its maximum anyway, and uh, yeah, I think that's going to be fine for this, so let's get building. Yeah, here's the uh, the Radeon memory. Um, like I said, this is uh, this is a little old. Okay, so we have the uh, old parts out. So let's get everything installed on the motherboard, uh, and then we can put the motherboard into the case uh, along with the power supply, graphics card. Uh, and I'm going to stick in this actually relatively old Corsair ML series fan. It does have a blue LED. Uh, I'd prefer white or none, but uh, these are remarkably quiet and remarkably sort of performant. And I have one in my system and it has held up very well. So I'm hoping that that one will do the same. Uh, where I'm putting this is still under my TV. So I actually don't have much clearance above here. So I'm actually not going to have any fans or maybe I'll leave the one that's already in there. Uh, maybe, probably not actually, uh, up top and it would just be the relatively small amount of ventilation in the front, uh, the hole that's in the side panel and uh, rear ventilation as well. So we'll, uh, we'll go for that. Now this is, uh, th this cooler design was one of the, I guess, earlier style. So what this is, is just the standard brackets that come on an AM4 motherboard, or actually technically they're ever so slightly different, but the ones that have been coming on AMD motherboards for a fair while. Uh, but this is a bar that goes through and just sort of clamps down. Unfortunately, the way that that layout happens means that these actually need to be going this way which is the ram in the way or is it just okay let's see oh it is that is reddit perfect fit territory that is oh okay cool well at least it fits right good seriously that is that is perfect fit i i couldn't have uh <laughs> designed that better if I tried. So this beauty is uh, the Silverstone and Nightjar series uh, NJ450 SXL and this is a 450 watt fanless power supply. The way these things work is basically that uh, the internals in here are essentially rated to what you would assume something like 800 watts but because they cap it at 450 this can run in a fanless configuration plus the entire hefty thing by the way is uh, the entire casing is essentially a heat sink so it will be dissipating a load of heat out of it. The reason I want to use this one instead of a standard ATX power supply is both because this is fanless so it's going to be nice and quiet in the living room and two because this is an 80 plus platinum rated unit. Part of the reason why this is fanless is that it's incredibly efficient and so that means that this is going to be a nice efficient system especially while it's idling or you know if it's just kind of sitting you know playing content it's going to be as efficient as possible. Luckily because this case has a, uh, a multi sort of directional power supply mount that means that uh, I actually can attach this SFXL power supply in two places which well one is twice as good as how I started this uh, project with the uh, zero place uh, held in and just resting on the uh, the old 24 pin and uh, it's actually relatively securely mounted so I'm quite happy with that. The power supply cables are relatively short and honestly there's not much room behind the case anyway so I might end up just routing some or all of the cables in the front of the chassis there's no window to this case uh, it's just going to be you know tucked away under my tv so i care more about it just working and doing well so i think that'll be all right all right let's get the motherboard installed uh, i've already installed the rear io shield and uh, one thing i do need to remember is that uh, most sort of modern cases that i build in especially for people like fantex and also like fractal uh, their central motherboard standoffs have little sort of shoulders on them which mean you can basically just hook the motherboard on uh, and it makes it really, really easy to build in those cases. This case doesn't have that. 
as I will now demonstrate by dropping the screw and almost dropping the motherboard. I think I am going to take this top fan out. There's just no airflow that's going to be coming from on the top of the case uh, because of where it's, it's going basically. So I think I'll uh, take this one out. Save the noise anyway. So as is always the case, nothing ever goes to plan. And so uh, this uh, 24 pin in particular, actually this 24 pin is just slightly too short. Like if it was about a centimeter longer, I could make it work. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So I'm gonna have to go with a standard power supply. And I happen to have this relatively old, but still 80 plus bronze, uh, 650 watt power supply. And since I'm planning on basically not using much of that 650 watts, I'm hoping that it's gonna be reasonably efficient. Okay, um, this was a massive hassle. Uh, this is not the system that I started with, and uh, yeah, it's mostly finished. Um, I will uh, take this downstairs, uh, get an OS installed, uh, and then we can play some games on it. So it's actually the next day, and uh, the reason for that is that pretty much everything that could have gone wrong kinda did. Uh, first of all, the power supply uh, that I picked uh, was a relatively old one, and I now remember the reason that I have generally stopped using it, and that's because it coil winds like crazy, especially just on idle, uh, and so that wasn't very good, I had to swap that one out. And uh, also the uh, the CMOS battery, the little uh, coin cell uh, that powers the, the BIOS and keeps the uh, clock running and that sort of stuff, um, that was dead. Very dead. It, that's a, a, a CR2032 uh, cell, which normally runs about 3 volts, 3.2 when it's brand new. Uh, I measured the voltage at 50 millivolts. <laughs> uh, so very dead. And also because this is an ITX board, it isn't just your standard, you know, pop it out, pop a new one in. It's one that's on a little extractor uh, or a little sort of header pin. Uh, so I had to chop the leads off and then... Um, Basically, I had to uh, just electrical tape it all back together. Uh, so it does work. That's it's good, um, but it's uh, less than ideal. Uh, but we are now running. We do have uh, Windows installed and uh, playing some Fall Guys because this is a pretty, I would say, common game that you would, uh, or at least the the same type of game that you would be playing on a living room PC. I'm having to move the controller around a bit because uh, the way that I have the system set up, the uh, rear I.O. for all of these wireless peripherals is uh, not, not, very, uh, not a very clear line of sight. Uh, and so I need to keep moving around to get uh, the best, uh, best connection. But anyway, it's, uh, it's pretty decent. I think we're actually running at 4K. Uh, which is kind of surprising. Obviously, it's, it's Fall Guys, it's fine. And we're probably running at like 45 FPS. Uh, but uh, these are all default settings, so I'm sure if I were to turn the resolution down a bit and if I were to set the uh, you know quality settings down a touch more, all would be fine. And to be honest, it's still a perfectly playable experience anyway. So, meh. I'm also using a Corsair K, I think it's 83 wireless, um, which is uh, a nice sort of premium... Uh, combo keyboard and, and trackpad with some backlighting which is actually quite nice. The only thing is that it charges with micro USB which is a bit of a shame, I prefer type C but anyway it's uh, it's a handy thing to have uh, about to uh, control all this. I think I'll need to install a USB hub or something to pull the IO out, I might stick it to like the top side or something but yeah not too bad. Okay, I might, I, I might definitely need to. Oh dear, I might definitely need to turn the, uh, turn the settings down a bit. No, yeah, okay, this is, this is difficult. Uh, whatever. No, ah, I'm out. Okay. So there you have a look at me um, losing my absolute mind over building a new system.
Uh, it's not quite 100% uh, finished, there will be some things that I will tweak over time, but I think I'll leave those for another day when I'm slightly less mad. <laughs> um, with that said, if you want to see uh, me descend into madness even further, then feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. If you want to see more videos like this one, or maybe more standard tech reviews and explained guides, that sort of stuff, feel free to, you know, obviously hit the subscribe button, let me know in the comments. You can also check out more on the end cards as well. Uh, otherwise, that is kind of it. If you want to support the channel, then you can do so with a load of different uh, links. There's uh, obviously the uh, YouTube join button where you get access to our Money Men Discord chat and sponsor free videos if you fancy, or you can support on Patreon instead and still get access to our, uh, our fancy private Discord channels. Uh, otherwise, that is kind of it. If you have any questions, suggestions, or um, oh, anything else, feel free to leave that in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.